In 5.2, we'll be proving lines parallel. And we'll be using some of the theorems we learned in the past couple days and also working on the converse of those theorems. We'll also be able to apply our exterior angle theorem. Ooh, that sounds captivating. So our exterior angle inequality theorem states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So what that's basically saying is our exterior angle here on this one is 4. So that means that the measure of angle 4 is going to be greater than either remote interior angle. And our remote interior angles are 1 and 2. They're the ones that are not touching that angle 4 there. So this would be greater than the measure of angle 1. And also we have the measure of angle 4 is greater than the measure of angle 2. That's basically all that says. What we're going to do is we're going to apply this into an algebra type situation. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have an exterior angle, which is this guy right out here. We have our interior angle, one of our remote interior angles, which is 75 degrees. So I know that 2x plus 5 is greater than 75 degrees. So 2x plus 5, it's greater than 75 degrees. Well, if it's greater than 75, what's the biggest that that angle could be? Well, it can't be equal to or bigger than 180 because we know that it's a straight angle then and that's definitely not a straight angle there because we can assume straight angles so we know that it has to be less than 180 degrees it could be 179.9999 and so on but it can't be 180 now we just solve the compound inequality so we'll subtract 5 from both sides and we get 70 and we get 175 and then we'll divide this guy by 2 and this one by 2 and this one by 2. So we know that x is greater than 35, but it's less than 87.5. So those would be my restrictions on x. When we have restrictions on x, generally we're looking at something that's going to have a compound inequality. Next thing I want you guys to do would be to write down the converse of each theorem we learned yesterday, and then we're going to use them. So here are the five converses of each theorem that we learned yesterday. We have our alternate interior angles that are congruent, then we have parallel lines. If we have alternate exterior angles that are congruent, then we have parallel lines. Corresponding angles are congruent, then we have parallel lines. If our same side interior angles are supplementary to each other, then we have parallel lines. And same with the same side exterior angles being supplementary, then we have parallel lines. Make sure you get these all written down, so pause it if you need to, and then let's use them. This example if angles 1 and 2 are congruent, we want to say which ones are parallel, which lines are parallel. And we need to state the theorem that justifies our answer. So if you can think you can do this on your own, pause it, try it. If you need a little help, keep the video rolling, and then maybe try the second one on your own. So right now we know that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. Okay. Well, here's what I see. I see this line here and this line here. And then I see this guy here, and see how that forms the two angles? This angle's formed, and this angle's formed. So that means that the two lines that are parallel are these here, and BD is my transversal. So I know that AB is parallel to CD. And it's very important that you can identify these lines being parallel, because you're going to have to do so in our proof. So right now we're just practicing. And why are, why are these two congruent, or sorry, why are these two parallel? Well, it's because our alternate interior angles are congruent. Then we have parallel lines. Notice how these guys are on the either side of the transversal, and they're on the inside of our two parallel lines. Let's take out the next one. Feel free to pause it. If you didn't know how to do the first one, pause it. Try this next one on your own. you got to be able to do these on your own. So I have 1 and 2 congruent. Okay. Let's look for these segments or lines that form these angles. So I have this one here and this one here. And I have this long one here. Does that form, do those form my angles? Yes, they do. So let's see what I have here. I have... FG is parallel to HI. And why is that? Hmm. Well, these two angles here, what's their relationship? They're in the same spot, they're corresponding. So we have corresponding 
angles congruent, then we have parallel lines. Bada boom, bada bing. Let's try a proof. It's a moment you've all been waiting for. The exciting, awesome, cool proof. Well, I know that, let's see here, I know that angle one is complementary to angle two. And I know that angle three is complementary to angle two. Hmm, that sounds familiar. And I'm also trying to prove QT and RS are parallel. Well, if QT and RS are parallel, I need to find some type of angle relationship. See, either alternate interior, alternate exterior angles congruent, corresponding angles congruent. I could have my same side interior, same side exterior being supplementary. Let's see what we can figure out. First off, I have my given to write down. Let's think, let's think how, how can I get these two lines here to be parallel? I want to prove that these two are parallel here. Okay, well, I can look for maybe a transversal. I could either have this one here. But I don't know anything about this angle down here and this angle right here or any of these other ones that, that are associated with that. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and say that this would not be the way to go on this one. Let's check out the other side. Let's see if I have this one here. Do I know anything about the angles formed by these three lines here? Well, I know that angle 1 is complementary to angle 2. I know that angle 3 is complementary to angle 2. Do I know that if two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they're congruent? I absolutely know that. So let's see here. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Angles comp to the same angle are congruent. So if two angles are complementary to the same exact angle, then they're going to be congruent to each other. So I have these two angles congruent. Well, those are my corresponding angles, and if I have corresponding angles congruent, I know I have parallel lines, so that means that QT is parallel to RS. Because if corresponding angles are congruent, then I have parallel lines. Sweet. Not too bad. Now, they will get a little trickier than that. That's the basics of it. But basically, we saw here, prove a couple angles congruent or prove a couple angles supplementary, whatever it may be, and I can get my lines to be parallel. So if you see parallel lines or you're asked to prove parallel lines, think congruent angles or get that supplementary pair of angles. But usually, we're going to be dealing with congruent angles with these problems. In case you need to try another exterior angle inequality theorem problem, there's one right here for you. So you pause it, try it, press play for the uh, explanation there. Well, this one, this is my exterior angle here. I know that it's going to be larger than the one here, so I have 2x, and I know that 2x is going to be less than the 120, so there's my upper limit, and then my lower limit, I know that it has to be greater than 0, because I couldn't have a 0 angle measure or a negative angle measure. So I'm going to go ahead and solve. I divide by 2 on everything. Oh no, 0 divided by 2, I can't do Oh yes, I can do that, it's 0. And then I get x, and then I get 60 over here. So those are my restrictions on x. Here's your homework. I know you guys were all very excited to find out what your homework would be and to test your knowledge. Don't forget, tomorrow we'll be reviewing, and then the next day we will have our test.